Hey guys, it's Clay with Minute Ministry, walking on my treadmill here, so I just wanted to uh, share with you what I've been thinking about lately. Uh, so, got a minute? So, James and John, whenever they're talking to uh, Jesus, they have this interesting conversation where um, Jesus asks them, are you ready, are you willing to drink the cup that's given me? And they say yes, and Jesus is like, looks at them, you know, like it, it kind of just shares that he looks at them and he says, you will. Um, and one day you will. But, you know, like kind of just, you know, talking about the left and the right hand of, you know, uh, as sitting at his table, he doesn't have that decision. And we look ahead. Now, this isn't in the Bible, but in historical writings, we see that um, James, James met his, his end. He was a martyr. Um, we see it, it was around 44 AD, so um, somewhere around 12, 11, 12 years after Jesus. Um, and he goes, and this new king, or new uh, governor of the area, uh, Agrippa, and he comes in and he wants to get rid of all the leaders of the Christian faith. He wants to persecute them. He wants to build his name off of them. And somebody comes forward and accuses James. And James, you know, basically ends up coming forth and uh, he gets beheaded. But on his way to be beheaded, the accuser of James, the one that ratted him out, um, converts. And the reason that it says that he converts is because of James's confidence, his unwavering faith, and his just determination. And so he comes forth, this guy, and says, don't pardon him, pardon James. You know, at the very least, don't let him die alone. And so the guy that accuses James ends up being beheaded at the same time as James, side by side. And so I'm just thinking about this. A lot of times we want to take the stance of James and John, you know, like, of course, Jesus, like, of course, we'll drink the cup that you had. Or if I was there, if I was there during that time, I would do that. And the funny thing about that is we, we could, in 20, 30 years from now, we could be saying the same thing. You know, like we're looking back at now, 100 years from now, people will be looking at our time, you know, if the Lord doesn't come back, and they would be saying, if I was there, I would be doing this. So what are we doing? You know, James and John, you know, like they were adamant. But there, we also see the same, in the same gospel, we see Paul, uh, Peter, you know, basically saying, of course, I would protect you. I would, you know, and Jesus is all like, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. So we know that this zealousness is good, but at the same time, whenever we put ourselves in a place where we think, oh, yeah, no, I could do that, then sometimes we're not being real. How do we know if we're real? Well, it's because in the little things, we're, we're willing to suffering, suffer as well. So whenever it comes down to it, do you suffer whenever things go wrong or do you complain? Do you close your mouth and praise God in all the pain that you have and all the frustrations that you have? Do you praise him? Do you, does your worship waver because of the things that you're going through? Because if it does, then I don't think that you could be one of these martyrs. I don't think that you could walk that route. And I'm not trying to judge you. I'm trying to tell you, look, we've got to be able to worship God and see his greatness every single moment of every single day. And if we strive for that, then no matter what, what ends up in front of us, if, you know, like the, our culture completely shifts and they start beheading Christians, you know, like we would be there and say, you know what? You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm unwavering in my faith. Doesn't mean that I want to be beheaded, but I'm unwavering in my faith and my confidence could even convert those that hate me. So thanks for taking a minute, guys. See ya.